I'm a little bit scared to make this video because I think I'm relatively well liked by the fandoms that I'm part of, but when it comes to my least favorite songs from groups I stan, my opinions are wildly unpopular, and I could make a lot of people mad today. Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video. As you could probably tell from the introductory section, today I'm going to be talking about my least favorite songs from groups I stan. I love each and every single one of the groups that I'm going to be talking about today, but I do not love all of their songs. In my opinion, every single artist has at least one weak spot in their discography unless they have like less than 20 songs. And I think especially within a fandom, it's really interesting to talk about which songs within an artist's discography are weaker than the others. Every artist I'll be talking about today has an above average discography, which is why I stand them. And even though today I'll be talking about music from them I don't like, I highly recommend checking out the rest of their music because it is honestly super good. Sorry for keeping you all waiting, I just have to get those disclaimers out there, and without further ado, let's get into the video. GBTV is the biggest example of a missed opportunity in K-pop that I have ever seen, and I would honestly go as far to say that it's Very Very's best produced song. There are so many really cool audio effects used that make the song sound muffled at some points, and at other times they'll strip down the instrumental to really emphasize the different sections of the music. Every single thing about the instrumental is genuine perfection, but the vocals just ruin this song for me. Don't get me wrong, I love a good chanting chorus when it's done right, but GBTB is not an example of that. It sounds like the members were trying a little bit too hard to make their voices powerful, but instead it had a negative effect which made them sound shrill. I think I could get past the chorus if it was shorter, but they decided to put in the chorus four times versus most songs which usually only do three, which makes the entire listening experience kind of grating when you're dreading the next chorus versus anticipating it. It's really disappointing because the rest of the song is so good, but it feels like they didn't know what to do with the chorus and kind of just threw something together last minute. <laughs> Whenever I listen to I'm the Trend, I catch myself wondering why I don't like the song. Having one of the more fun instrumentals in Idol's discography, for about the first 40 seconds, I have absolutely no complaints. Don't get me wrong, I love when an artist makes references to their own music in a song, but I think there are a lot more creative ways to do it than to just throw every single catchphrase from your past title tracks into 10 seconds of the song and not have it relate to any other point in the music. Considering the entire point of this song was to reference their other music, it feels a little strange how the only part where they actually do this is that little 10 second section in the second half of the chorus. I think if they weave the catchphrases into the verses, and just use different lyrics for the second half of the chorus while weaving in a couple of the catchphrases in there, it would make the entire song feel a lot more cohesive. I think I'm the Trend is really well made, but the end product feels sort of lazy and it's just something I never find myself going back to. Miki has one of the best discographies that I've ever heard, but unfortunately it gets drugged down a little bit by the presence of one or two sleeper ballads in every single mini album they've ever put out. I know I picked Universe as my final choice for their worst song, but you honestly could have switched it out for any of the other ballads in their discography because they all sort of sound the same. It's really strange because their mini albums always have an amazing title track and at least two really stunning and innovative b-sides, and then their company just decides to give them the same ballad with a different name each time that not only doesn't deviate from the rest and sound, but also doesn't even challenge their voices or show off their potential. It would be fine if they changed the sound depending on the album, like maybe giving them a power ballad and then doing an acoustic one depending on the title track, but basically every single ballad that Wikimiki has put out has fallen under this sort of mellow, outdated sound, not even deviating into the R&B category, and it's just a little bit disappointing. If Reason was given a little bit more time to be fine-tuned and perfected, it would be one of MCND's best songs, but unfortunately it feels very rushed and it shows in the musical quality. Initially being released as a pre-release track for their third mini-album, when the song was eventually added to Spotify once the album dropped, there was actually an additional 40 seconds added onto the end. Obviously there's no confirmation if this is actually true, but I feel like they were still working on the song when they decided to release it 20 days early, and you can sort of hear it with the vocal mixing sounding very disconnected 
disconnected from the instrumental during the chorus. I will say, the rap sections in this song, despite being completely in English, a language that none of the members fluently speak, flow really well, and it's truly an example of MC&D's rapping prowess. Personally though, you can sort of get a fulfilling experience through this song. It's honestly not that bad, but the fact that it could be so much better really does drag it down for me. I can acknowledge Rock With You as an objectively fine song, but to me, it sort of embodies a lot of western trends that made me want to stop listening to English music in general. This is truly just a subjective opinion, but I hate falsetto choruses. I mean, at least most of them. And another western parallel that I'm not a fan of is how the instrumental sort of takes a step back in musicality and complexity in order to focus on the vocals, which, as I said, I'm not really a fan of in this song. Something that is generally so interesting about K-pop is how they combine such interesting and fun to listen to instrumentals with just about any vocal line which makes so many k-pop songs have longevity that lasts for years. I can seriously go back to most k-pop songs that were released in January and still notice things that I hadn't found out before, and with Rock With You, you can sort of just listen to it once and be like, okay, that was okay let's move on. There's nothing that makes me want to go back to it, and with 17, that's extremely hard to do. Again, I think Rock With You is fine, it just doesn't have any longevity to me, but I can totally understand why anybody else would want to go back to it. Run away! My big problem with Runaway is that it never really seems to go anywhere or build up as a song. There's actually no deviation between the first verse and the second verse besides the lyrics, and normally that would be fine, but Runaway feels so slow where it seems like you're walking through molasses to try and get to that second chorus. People will definitely argue that the bridge has really nice build up and intensity, and I don't disagree with that, I think the bridge is one of the best things they've ever produced. But another problem I have with Runaway is how anticlimactic the chorus feels. Cube has such a plethora of well-made EDM choruses, so it's a little strange how Runaway's chorus feels like something you could find on those like free, no copyright music channels. I love Hui as a producer, I just think Runaway was sort of a weak spot in his creative bank. Oh no, here I go again. Misunderstood sort of sounds like if you asked a K-pop producer who's never heard an R&B song in their life to make one. Coupled with the edgy lyrics such as, I'm not alright, 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 I'm not okay, Misunderstood basically never has any rhythm change, and it feels like it doesn't really know where the transitions are between each section of the song. When I first listened to it, the chorus was already over and I thought we were still in the pre-chorus section, and you can't even call the chorus an anti-drop because it has the same low energy that the rest of the song has too. It's strange because Kung Daniel works with so many KRMB artists where you think one of them would be like, hey, maybe we should reconsider this song, but instead we got this on one of his official releases and it just doesn't really have any purpose or even direction, it's just another filler song. I was really excited to see TWICE subunits for the first time, but I was sort of disappointed by the end result when it feels like we just got an itsy reject without anybody doing anything to make the song sound good. I was really excited at first to hear a rap based track from TWICE with Momo no less, but it doesn't really feel like a true rap track when half of it is the chorus of the song. There are only really two true rap verses, and they kind of do the same rhythm both times. And I mean, I honestly think the three of them have pretty decent flow, but the lyricism and writing just feel very uninspired, and I think they could have pushed the three of them to do a little bit more in terms of speed and just technicality, I don't know. There's also the elephant in the room of the last 30 seconds where they just repeat fanfare hands in the air A. Despite being the same lyrics for literally 30 seconds, there's also just some vocal effect or something affecting their voices that I don't know what it is that just throws me off, and it's just... Yeah, I don't know how to describe it, it's just not good. And that concludes this video. Once again, there were no malicious intentions behind this video, I stand every single one of these groups. But I think it's fun and important to have open discussions about our faves music because, I mean, toxic positivity is definitely a thing. Thank you guys so much for watching, I hope no one's too mad at me, and if you actually enjoyed, consider leaving a like or even subscribing. Let me know what your least favorite songs from your favorite groups are in the comments, and without further ado, see you next time.